Thank you for worshiping with Crossroads Nazarene Church, where we are in our Christmas series, Making Room for God's Gifts. For more information about Crossroads, please visit our website at cvcrossroads.com. There, you can find out more information about our church, online giving, and small groups. You can also find us on Facebook at CV Crossroads. Well, happy Sunday after Christmas, uh, the 26th of December. Goodness sakes, a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to worship, for us to be able to kind of look back and to reflect upon this Christmas season in the year 2021. It's been kind of a very kind of up and down season, just in our country and our personal lives, all of those sorts of things. And, and as we look back on, on this year, the opportunity to, to remember that God is with us and He loves us. And, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about, we've been talking about making room for God's gifts uh, this Christmas season. And today we're going to see how this gift of God keeps on giving. Have you noticed that on Christmas Day, it seems like the whole world shuts down? Stores, offices closed. There will be very few people on the highways. I mean, it's amazing that an event that happened more than 2,000 years ago can have such a profound impact upon us today here on the other side of the world, how it impacts us. So as we've been looking at making room for God's gifts this year, we have seen that the greatest gifts in Christmas are the ones that God has given to us. And today we're going to see how God's gift keeps on giving. It keeps on giving. And there are three reasons we're going to see why that is. One is because of the relevance of His gift and His gifts. The second is because of the reason for His gifts. And third, because of the result of the gifts that God has given to us. So let's look at those three this morning. First, there's the relevance of God's Christmas gifts to us. And the relevance is this, God came to earth. He came to earth. I think we can sum up the relevance of Christmas in that one phrase, God came to earth. During World War II, it was a big news item when the Allies invaded Normandy on D-Day. But it is even bigger news that God invaded this earth more than 2,000 years ago. It was very big news when man walked on the moon in 1968. But it is even bigger news when God walked on the earth. And not only did not God walk on this earth and come to this earth, but most shocking of all is He came in the form of a human being. Notice what the Bible says. Jesus Christ is the exact likeness of the unseen God. He existed before God made anything at all. In fact, Christ Himself is the Creator who made everything. That tells us that Jesus did not start in the stable. His beginning was not that little manger scene. He existed before creation. In fact, the Bible says He is the Creator because He is God. He made the universe, He made the earth, He made you and me and everything that we see and experience in this life. The Bible says He became like men and was born a human being. As I was thinking about that, I think it might be safe to observe that if, if we were God, we likely wouldn't have done it this way. We, we would more likely have chosen a more spectacular way to come to earth. Something with a little more pizzazz, maybe a little more pyrotechnics to it. Like during halftime of the Super Bowl, where millions are, uh, wi wa uh, worldwide are watching, and lots of fireworks and thunder and lightning and cosmic sounds taking place. We would likely plan that all of the world's leaders would be lined up on the 50-yard line, waiting to give billions of dollars worth of extravagant gifts to this Son of God who is born to this earth. In fact, we'd probably hand out these free gift bags to everybody. It would be the ultimate birthday party. That's how we would likely do it. But God had another idea. He chose to come into this world the same way that everybody in the world does, by being born into it. And it shocks us to realize that God, who created the universe, would be so humble and would limit Himself and come down to earth in human form. 
And not only that, but be born of peasant parents in a stable, in a tiny little out of the way village. And it was all very, very risky. All of God's plan for the world was wrapped up in that fragile little baby. So of all the ways that, that God could have come to earth, why did he come as a baby? There's a reason. Because he came to save us, not to scare us. Nobody's afraid of a baby. God could have come to earth in a lot of ways that would have freaked us out, scared us half to death, made us run in terror. But he didn't. He came in a way that we could all relate to because we all came to earth by being born. God came in the same way so that we can relate to him. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ was a human being in every way. In coming to earth, he limited himself so that he could become both God and man at the same time. He was born like us. He grew up like us. And I don't want to blow your stereotype into pieces, but Jesus did not walk around in these spotless white robes with a halo and a glow, on it and a glow and a smile on his face like they show in some of the movies. He was every bit a Palestinian Jew because that's what he was. He worked in a carpenter shop, so he probably had very well-developed muscles. He looked like an average guy because he was. He had the same struggles that we have. He experienced the same temptations, the same desires, the same drives, the same problems. The Bible says he suffered just like we do. There were times when Jesus was lonely. There were times when he was tempted to be discouraged, time when he was very frustrated. There were times, certainly, when he was fatigued and exhausted and tired. That is great news because it means that he understands how you and I feel. God says, I've been there. I came to earth and I experienced what it means to be a human. It is sad yet very true that Christmas is not a happy time for some people. Christmas can stir up all kinds of negative emotions for many. Or sometimes there's grief over loved ones who, who aren't with us any longer. Sometimes there's depression over the thought, you know, another year is almost past and, and I'm no different. Same old thing. And sometimes all kinds of other difficulties can surface during Christmas time so that we feel sad and we feel depressed. If you feel that way today, Jesus understands that. He knows exactly what you are feeling right now. He knows that because first, He made you, and second, He became a human being Himself. So what billions of people celebrate on Christmas is not the birth of some average normal baby. This baby was God in human form. So Christmas is a big deal because of its relevance. God came to earth. He came to earth as a human being. It's the most significant event in human history. Second, there is the reason for Christmas, and it is this. Jesus came for our benefit. He came because we needed him to come. Now, maybe you don't realize it, but we needed him to come. The Bible tells us there are four reasons why Jesus came to earth at Christmas. One of those is he came to earth to show us what God is like. There are a lot of crazy ideas about what God is like. All we have to do to find some of those is to go on the internet and look around a little bit and we will find them. A lot of times people will say things like, well, I don't believe in a God that, and then fill in the blank. And after having listened to their description of the God they don't believe in, I will often say, no, I really don't either believe in that kind of a God because there are a lot of crazy ideas about God that just are not true. That's why Jesus came. Jesus said, I am the truth. I came to show you exactly what God is really like. When we go outside, there are some things we can learn, learn about God just by going up or looking, into the, uh, looking in the mountains. We live in a beautiful area of the country in, 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 the, Garden, in the Gardnerville, Carson Valley area. 
And by looking at nature, we can just see that God is creative. We can see, by looking at nature, we can see that, that God is powerful. We see waves and winds and rotation of, of the earth, and we see the power of God in the universe. We, we know that God is organized because there is incredible order to this universe. We know that God likes variety because there's an incredible amount of variety in this world. We know that God likes beautiful things. And we learn these just by looking at the wonder of creation. But there are some things, in fact, the most important things, that we will never know about God except that Jesus came to tell us. For instance, nature does not teach us that God is loving. We only know that because of Jesus Christ. Nature doesn't teach us that God is forgiving. We only know that because of Jesus. Nature does not teach us that God has a plan for our life, that, that we're not here by accident, that He put you and me on this earth for a purpose and for a reason. Only Jesus can teach us that. He is the one that lets us know what God is really like. A second reason Jesus came to earth is to show us how to live. There's a huge difference between living and existing. A lot of people exist without really living. When we think about it, it's kind of a life of getting up in the morning, going to work or going to school, coming home, going to tele watching television and going to bed, and doing this over and over again for 60, 70, 80, or even more years, and then they die. And they never really lived. They just existed. One of the best-known statements of Jesus is when he said this, I have come that you might have life to the fullest. Jesus did not say, and I'm glad he didn't say there, that I have come to give you a religion. He didn't say, I've come to make you religious. He did say, I've come to make you fully alive. I've come to teach you the kind of life that God puts you on earth to live. And until we get connected with our Creator, we're not going to live life to the fullest. We're just going to be existing. Third, Jesus came to earth to show us that we can trust God. We can trust God. I think we understand that we don't trust somebody if we don't know them. We've got to get to know someone before we truly place our trust in them. So if we don't trust God very much, it would be because we really don't know Him very well. But the more we know about God, the more we will trust Him. The more, more we know about Him, we will realize He is worthy of our trust, that we can count on Him, we can depend on Him. We have to get to know Him so we can learn to trust Him. That's one of the reasons Jesus came. And then a fourth reason Jesus came is to forgive everything we've ever done wrong so that we can go to a perfect place called heaven when we die. To forgive everything we've ever done wrong, so we can go to heaven, a perfect place, when we die. When we think about that, it's an incredible deal. The Bible says He became a man so that He could take away our sins. Here's how it says it in Philippians. Though He was God, He laid aside His mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. And He humbled Himself even further, going so far as to actually die a criminal's death on the cross. So Jesus Christ came to earth to die for all the things that we've done wrong. So we don't have to pay for them, so that we can truly be forgiven. That's called grace. And it is the only way we're ever going to get into heaven because none of us is perfect. God sacrificed a lot to do this for you and me. Jesus left His eternal throne. He left His kingdom. He limited Himself. He, be, he became a human being who put up with all of the aches and pains and suffering that we have. He started off His life on earth in a manger. He brought His life on earth to a close by going to a cross in our place. Have you ever wondered why it is that God would go to such extremes? Why, why would He come to earth in human form and die for us? There really is only one explanation, and that is because He loves us. 
He loves you and me more than we will ever be able to comprehend. We can't fathom how much He loves us. No one will ever love you and me personally, by name, as much as God does. The Bible tells us God showed how much He loves us by sending His only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through Him. This is real love, that God sent His Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. And the incredible thing is that Jesus Christ laid down His life for you and me when we deserved it the least, before we even knew Him, when we were, when we were going the complete opposite direction from Him. That is when He gave His life for us. You've probably seen the bumper stickers or lapel pins at, at Christmas time that say, Jesus is the reason for the season. And that is true. Jesus is the reason for the season. Christmas is not about Santa. It's about a Savior. It's not about jingle bells. It's about Jesus. But there is even a deeper truth than that. Yes, Christmas is about Jesus. He is the reason for the season. But let me tell you something even deeper. You are the reason for the season. God knew that you needed Him to come to earth and to die for you. That's why He came to earth. If you didn't need what Jesus Christ had to offer, He would not have wasted the effort, nor would He have needed to. You are the reason for the season. You are the reason we celebrate Christmas. It's God's Christmas gift to you. And then number three is the result of Christmas. And the result of Christmas is you can know God. You can know God. We can know God personally. We can have a personal relationship with the Creator of this universe. God knows everything about us, and He wants us to know about Him. Did you know that He wants to be friends with us? His desire to be friends with us is the reason why we were created in the first place. The reason we are on this earth is to have a relationship with God. It's why God made you and made me. If we miss out on the fact that God created us for a relationship with Him, we really have just blown our entire life. We've missed out the, on the whole reason why we are here. We are here to get to know God on a personal basis. So the greatest gift of Christmas is God saying, I want you to know me like I know you. But we have to receive God's gift if, it, if it's going to make any difference in our lives. One time a few years back, I, I was cleaning out one of the drawers in my desk in my, in my office. And stuffed in the back of the drawer, I found an old Christmas card. And that Christmas card, the envelope was unopened. And it had been given to me the year before. Inside, I, after I opened it, there was a gift certificate. And it had been given to me a year or so ago. And it was a gift certificate for a very nice restaurant in town. And it's one that uh, I could have used it, but I hadn't because it was unopened. It was a wonderful gift, yet even a wonderful gift, if it is unopened, becomes a worthless gift. I didn't, wasn't able to use it until I opened the envelope and received it. Well, God has a wonderful gift for you. The Bible says it this way in Romans chapter 5. We were restored to friendship with God by the death of His Son while we were still His enemies. And we will be delivered from eternal punishment by His life. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. This is the most wonderful gift we will ever be given. Nothing even compares to it. So yesterday, you probably opened a number of gifts. Now, of, of those gifts you opened, some of them possibly were a bit impersonal. Some of them were maybe a little bit impractical, and, and you really don't know even how you could use them. Some of the gifts you opened maybe are temporary. By that I mean they're already broken, or maybe they are already half worn out because you use them just for a few moments because they're inexpensive and they're flimsy. But none of these descriptions apply to God's gift 
to you. God's gift is personal. It is custom made to fit us. It says in the Bible, unto you is born a Savior. That's what the angel tells us. God's gift is also practical. This is the most practical gift we will ever receive. It's a gift that every one of us need. God's gift is also priceless. It's priceless because Jesus Christ paid for it with his own life. That's how much it costs to pay for this gift to you and me. And fourth, it is permanent. You can receive it today and it will last. You can walk and have a relationship with Jesus Christ throughout eternity because of the permanence of this gift. So where are you going to go to get an incredible gift like that? Actually, there's nowhere we can go except to God. And no one we can receive it from except from Him. If I told you that I had a gift for you that would solve the biggest problems you have, that it could heal your deepest hurts, that it can forgive every sin and wrong you've ever done, would you be interested in that gift? Not only so, but if I added and said, you know, that gift, this gift I'm talking about will also help you to understand the purpose for which you are here. This, this gift will help you to become a better person. This gift will, will fill your life with a confidence and joy and peace. And oh, by the way, it'll also provide you a future in heaven. Would you be interested in a gift like that? I think we would all, all would say, of course, of course I would. So might I ask, if you do not have this gift, how many more Christmases are you going to go and go through before you finally accept God's gift to you? It is very tragic and yet true that, that we can have a very elaborate Christmas year after year without unwrapping the greatest gift under the tree. And that is God's gift to you and me. This gift is what Christmas is all about. So how many more Christmases are you going to go through? Because an unopened gift really is a worthless gift. Please don't let another Christmas go by without accepting and unwrapping God's gift to you. I've attempted today to describe God's most wonderful gift to us because it really is the gift that keeps on giving. When we fully understand how wonderful and incredible God's gift of love through His Son, Jesus Christ, is to us, then there's really only one logical response, and that is that we would say, I accept it. We accept this gift. So let me tell, tell us, how do I accept God's most wonderful gift? I'm so glad it's simple. In fact, it is simple as A, B, C. The A stands for admit. I admit that He is God. I admit that. The B represents the word believe. I believe that God loves me. I believe that He's in control. I believe that He can take even the bad things in my life and turn them around and bring good out of them because He is calling the shots. And the C represents the word commit. Because of who He is, I commit the rest of my life to following His plan for my life. The purpose I was created for in the first place. And I commit to that. Recently I saw a store with a sign out front and the sign said, Under New Management. That really is what it means to choose to be a follower of Jesus Christ. It means that you are under new management. Jesus Christ is now the manager of your life. He is Lord. And, and, and so we say, I'm not calling the shots anymore. I, I, he is calling the shots. He, he made me. He loves me. He knows what is best. So I am going to follow the plan that I was put on this earth to follow. Why should we do that? Well, two reasons. One is He made you and me. And two, He loves you. And He loves me enough to come and die for us so all of our sins could be forgiven and we could go to heaven when this life is completed. No one else is able to provide that kind of a gift. And this gift from God is one that keeps on giving. Listen to this passage of Scripture. For this reason, God gave Jesus the name that is greater than any other name. 
One day all beings in heaven and on earth and in the world below will fall on their knees and will openly proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. There are many people today who are asking, what is this world coming to? Based on God's word, I can tell you, this world is going to end one day. It's going to end. Now, we don't know when, but it is going to end. The Bible tells us that one day, everybody who has ever lived is going to stand before God on a day of accountability. Everyone will be there. Every nation, every ethnic group, every language, every religion, uh, every age group, every person who has ever lived will be there. And the Bible says that everyone there is going to bow and openly admit what's been the truth for centuries and for eternity, and that is Jesus is Lord. On that upcoming day of accounting for our lives, it will be too late for us to change directions. But we're still going to admit that Jesus is Lord. Every politician is going to be there. Every businessman is going to be there. Every rock star is going to be there. Every athlete is going to be there. Every homemaker is going to be there. Everyone is going to be there on their knees saying, Jesus is Lord. On that day, all of the denial and the arrogance will be over. Hitler will be in that crowd, and he will be on his knees saying, Jesus is Lord. Karl Marx will be there with all of the billions of, of others on his knees saying, Jesus is Lord. Donald Trump will be in that crowd. Joe Biden will be there. Fauci will be there. Everybody will be on our knees declaring, Jesus is Lord. The issue is not whether you're going to admit that Jesus is Lord. You're going to. The issue is not if. It's just a matter of when. Either now or later. Either now in love, in accepting his gift, or later in regret that we didn't accept it. So with that being how life is heading toward, why would you wait? Why would you not accept this kind of love this kind of purpose that God has created you for. When Jesus is our manager and our Lord, with Him leading us, we can handle anything. That means that if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling stressed out, you just say it out loud, Jesus is Lord. When you can't cope any longer, you say, Jesus is Lord. When you're lonely or you're, de you're depressed or when you're worried or afraid or sad or grieving, you say it and declare it, Jesus is Lord. And in saying that, what we are saying is, I know he loves me. I know he's in control and I am going to trust him. Today, God wants you to accept his Christmas gift. He does not want you to go another season without beginning that relationship with him that Jesus Christ came to establish. Or maybe in your life you, you have, been close, have been closer to God in the past than you are right now, and you've drifted away for the many reasons that that can happen. But I can't think of a better time than the Christmas season to return to God, to return to Him and say, God, I want to restore a relationship with you that has gotten out of date and isn't what it needs to be and isn't the way it used to be. So today, right now, this might be your moment to accept God's Christmas gift to you. I'm going to say a prayer, and if this expresses the desire of your heart, please join in and just say, yeah, me too. God, what, what, what's being said in this prayer, I agree. That's what I want. So let's pray. Dear God, I don't want to let another Christmas pass by without accepting your gift to me. Thank you for coming to earth so I could know what you're like. I'm amazed that you would even want a relationship with someone like me. I want to get to know you. I want to learn to trust you. Please help me to know the purpose that you put me on earth for. I know I've done a lot of things wrong, and I'm especially grateful 
for your forgiveness and your gift of eternal life when I ask you for that forgiveness. So from this day forward, I want to be under new management. I want you to be Lord of my life because your gift is one that keeps on giving, not only now, not only throughout this life, but throughout eternity. So I accept and receive your gift to me right now. Thank you for your love and forgiveness for me. In Christ's name, amen. Well, Christmas is a great time. It's a time for us to remember exactly what our purpose is, and that is to have a relationship with God. If you've begun that relationship today or refresh that relationship with Him today, begin those steps of walking with Him continually, listening to Him, finding a, a, a place to worship, a place to get to know Him better at, with other Christ followers who, who can walk alongside you. Well, have a great week and coming up to a new year. And I will see you next week after New Year. And uh, we will talk a little bit about what's taking place in 2022. But in the meantime, God bless you and have a wonderful week.